Hi, Jamie Davis, the pod medic here at the Physio Control booth at EMS World Expo 2013. And you know, I always say this, it wouldn't be a conference if I didn't get a chance to talk to Cam Pollock because uh, Cam, you're the VP of Marketing for Physio Control and you have, uh, you have really, I think, your fingers on the pulse of what's going on in, in healthcare and EMS. Well, thanks, Jamie. It's good to be here as always. So let's talk a little bit about, first of all, your brand new booth. This is sure. exciting. What, you guys really got a, a fantastic look here with little vignettes, scenario areas. Yeah, so we, we, uh, it's our first new booth in five years. Uh, we had some real uh, interesting things we wanted to accomplish with the new booth. Uh, one of them is we wanted it to be high tech. So you'll see we've got uh, iPads around for people that, that are interactive. People can explore our products, uh, learn about them. We have, uh, we have some uh, nice touch video screens around for people to explore as well. One of the biggest things about the booth that's different is it's rather than product centric, it's scenario based. So one of our pushes as a company is really to be more of a system, take more of a system approach, look at solutions for customers solving their problems, not just delivering a, a series of products, but a group of products and services that work together to solve a problem like improving cardiac arrest survival or improving CPR. And so we actually, if you look behind us here in the booth, we have uh, a restaurant scene, we have the back of an ambulance scene, and our customers can come in and see how the products interact in those scenarios. It might be a LifePack 15 and Lucas, LifeNet, going to CodeStat all together in one spot and really showing the interaction of the products together. On top of that, the booth is, uh, it looks great and it's, uh, it's lighter than the old booth, so it's gonna save us some money in shipping as well. And, and, and greener because it's lighter as well, so that's, that's always an important factor. Yep, absolutely. So this is the first time, uh, you know, it's got a couple uh, hiccups on the first uh, run, but uh, we, we like it, it, it looks great, our, our customers love it as well. Yeah, it's fantastic. So uh, your focus here, as, as it has been in recent uh, months, has been really focusing on high quality CPR. And you're debuting, for EMS at least, the, the True CPR tool. Tell us a little bit about that. Right, well True CPR is a brand new product for us. Uh, it's been in development for a couple of years. And we talked about it a little bit uh, once before, I think, but uh, when we uh, were trying to solve the problem of how to improve CPR, uh, we looked at some of the other things that were out there. There are some products that are accelerometer based and accelerometers are pretty common. They're in everybody's smartphone. Um, and it's a nice technology for certain things, but uh, with CPR, it leaves some room for improvement. Uh, we basically found, as we were doing our research, we found that they're pretty ineffective or inaccurate at least on, uh, on soft surfaces. So a hospital bed, a gurney, back of a moving ambulance, um, inaccurate and in inaccurate in the, in the wrong way. Uh, for example, someone might be told they're doing two inches of CPR on a bed, they might actually only be doing an inch and a half. Uh, so they, they need to go deeper because of that give in the, the mattress. Bed's giving an extra half inch or an inch. Right. They're losing that compression. Right. So uh, we came up with a, a technology. It's, a, it's something brand new. It's called triaxial field induction which is a bit of a mouthful, but it basically is a very low level uh, magnetic field. We have a reference plate as well as the chest plate. And so you put the reference plate under the patient and you can actually be accurate with, you know, plus or minus 10%. Uh, uh, so it's very accurate CPR measurement. So our goal was to make something that was, uh, had great feedback. Um, it gives the depth, it gives the rate, uh, so people can do CPR properly and give, get you know, feedback right on the spot while they're, while they're uh, using the product. It's great for training as well. We also wanted something that gave feedback after the fact. So when you're done with an event, right there on scene, you can press, uh, hold down two buttons after you turn it off. You can see immediately what kind of CPR fraction you had, what percent of the time you were giving good depth. Uh, and uh, you can also download that and, and see it afterwards for quality improvement. We, the next version of CodeStat uh, will also uh, be able to download directly into CodeStat and make a complete picture of the code event. Uh, and then we also wanted to make it very simple. So it's just a simple dial when you're giving the right the right depth, it just shows you mm -hmm. you're getting up in the green. It's a very simple product to use, uh, a lot of excitement about it. We, we launched it outside the U.S. first. I launched it this spring in the U.S. and it's now, uh, this is really our debut in EMS. It's a lot of interest, a lot of people practicing with it here in the booth. It's a really great tool and I got the chance to first see it back at the Critical Care Nurses Conference when uh, I got a chance to see that your actual debut to healthcare there and uh, it's, a, it's a really great tool. It's portable, it's easy to use, uh, uh, it's device agnostic so no matter what you're, what, whatever mo monitor you're using or what, what you can still use this device to give you good high quality compression. Right and that was actually important for us because uh, uh, for a couple reasons. One we wanted something that anybody could use if they were using a LifePak 1000 or 15 or a competitive device. We wanted something really simple that they could uh, pull out of a pouch and, and just use right away on CPR. Um, but it really for us it's part of a whole suite of, of tools to improve CPR because what, again we're not 
just trying to get a product out there, we're trying to solve a problem. And the problem is how do we improve CPR performance across the system, either in the hospital or the pre-hospital. Uh, so True CPR is part of that portfolio. Certainly at the upper end, we have Lucas, and we've talked about Lucas several times. Um, Lucas is still our fastest growing product. There's over 5,000 of them around the world now, um, and uh, doing very, very well. And, and can we talk a little bit about the link? Sure. You know, survey or link research uh, study yeah. because that um, that just came out and had yeah. some interesting things to say about the quality of compressions, which has been a question a lot of people have had. Yeah, sure. And uh, the link link uh, early results on link were just um, just presented at the uh, European Site of Cardiology meeting in Amsterdam a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so there's an abstract out, some of the basic information. The full study isn't presented yet, so I can't go into details across all of the subgroups that they looked at. Uh, but uh, basically what we saw is that um, Lucas CPR was, was equivalent to uh, great manual CPR. Uh, it was almost exactly the same, the, the short-term survival in those two arms. Uh, but we also saw some very promising results in some of the subgroups, and the one that was reported on was uh, neurologic survival at six months, neurologic intact survival at six months. And we showed a 8.5% um, survival rate with neurologically intact on the Lucas group and 7.6% in, in the manual CPR arm. So not statistically significant difference, but a positive trend. And uh, we see that, and in, in people will see in the, in the final study that we had some of those positive trends in, in a number of the subgroups. Um, so we're, we're pleased by that. We didn't expect to see in, in a 2,500 in patient study, you don't expect to see you know, huge differences in survival. It's really difficult to, to do uh, pre-hospital cardiac arrest research. Uh, but it does prove also that Lucas was safe, it was effective, it was easy to use, um, and we saw those positive trends that we're really encouraged by. And it's just all part of your whole focus on, as you said, high quality CPR and giving the people in the field the tools they need to do high quality CPR. Right. Well, one of the other important pieces about CPR quality, and you see this in the guidelines, is around giving feedback. And giving feedback that's high quality feedback, giving it immediately. And that's uh, our, our code stat tool does that as well. I mean, we have the same, uh, a similar tool uh, connected to true CPR. But we think one of the most important ways to improve CPR is to give crews, immediately after they do the CPR, feedback on how well they did. What was their compression fraction? Uh, what was their rate? Um, so that, that code stat tool can underlie everything that we're doing. Lucas, true CPR, even the, the basic tools we have available with the Lifeback 15, like the metronome um, and Tidal CO2. So there's a, there's a whole suite of uh, products that's not the last uh, thing that you'll see come out from us, but it's really a suite of, of products and solutions to improve the problem of how do we get, uh, improve CPR, how do we improve CPR quality. You're always innovating, and I love that about uh, physio control. I always get wowed by the next thing you bring out. Uh, anything on the horizon you can talk about at all, or any directions you're looking in? Uh, <laughs> no, there's lots of things in the pipe. Uh, we actually have more going on in our innovation uh, pipeline right now than any time that I've been associated with physio control. Uh, we have several new platform products in development. We have some partnerships we're working on. Nothing I can talk about, unfortunately. Um, but you'll, you'll be the first to know, Jamie. As soon as we, uh, we get those going, we'll stop by and talk about them. Um, but over the next several years, I think people will see uh, a lot of exciting stuff come from Physio. One of the things that uh, we have a couple new partnerships that we've announced recently. We just mentioned, uh, we already talked about the pulse point relationship, and we, we have uh, high hopes for that. We think it's uh, really going to be a nice tool. Uh, to, to really complete a system of care and we can go into community and talk about how you improve survival rates in the community. Um, it's not just AEDs, it's not just CPR, it's a lot of things together and, and getting bystanders involved, getting bystanders activated to go do CPR um, is something we think will help move the needle in communities. Um, so we're excited about that one. We just uh, talked about a couple weeks ago um, a new uh, relationship with American Red Cross and uh, they're selling uh, our AEDs uh, for us, but we have other aspects of that partnership uh, to come later. Uh, we'll be talking about those probably within the next uh, six months. I'll tell you about what's going on there, but we exciting new relationship uh, with those guys. Uh, very high class organization, American Red Cross, and a great brand obviously as well. Um, so it's, it's good for us. Really for us, the, I think the final message is that we are taking a system approach to everything we do. Uh, we, we just launched um, in the hospital market our code management system basically giving Lifeback 20 users the ability to, to download information to CodeStat as well and have that same kind of quality improvement in the hospital that we've seen in the pre-hospital, adding in title CO2. Uh, but it's the same in the, in the pre-hospital environment. We're, we see it as a system, and so it's not just one product, it's the Lifeback 15 connected with LifeNet to CodeStat, moving that data, adding the CPR tools, and, and coming up with ways to improve the system, improve the survival rates. 
Well, Kim, as always, it's a pleasure talking with you. I really get a sense that I understand uh, some of the trends in industry in EMS and in healthcare just by getting a chance to chat with you a couple times a year. So thank you very much for coming back on. All right. Thanks a lot, Jamie. Talk to you later. And I want to thank all of you for coming here. Remember, you can catch more segments like this from EMS World Expo 2013 at medicast.tv and also over at the ProMed Network at promednetwork.com. I'm Jamie Davis, the Pot Medic. We'll be back with more here from EMS World Expo.